Shalom. Giving all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachakwarash. Double honors to the apostles, the bishops, and the elders at Great Millstone who were well. Peace and salutations as always to the elect. Right, as you can see in the title, this is Prophecy Watch as we look around the world. All right, tying the things that are happening to the Holy Scriptures because all things are being fulfilled, which were foretold, all right, by the Holy Prophets, which were sent into the earth to do a very, very important job, all right, which in these latter days, the prophets have been raised up again, all right, and as the scriptures say, let thy prophets be found faithful, all right, so when we go into these prophecies, all right, we're not doing these things to uh, uplift ourselves and make ourselves seem you know, like we're just these great men and look what I found. But ultimately to uplift and glorify the names of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, all right, in Egypt, all right, when that great deliverance took place, all right, it brought glory to the name, all right, Yahweh. And he did that via his angel, all right, which is his mediator, all right, his, his priest, all right, the priest of the Most High God, his angel, his messenger, which is all fulfilled in his only begotten son. That's who delivered us out of Egypt by the hand of the Most High God, Yahweh. Okay, and the name Yahweh received fame throughout the whole land at that time. All right, and right now we're living in a world that's void of respect, all right, for the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, all right, and his only begotten son, you see? So we've been sent into the world all right, to declare those names, bringing back an ancient legacy that goes all the way back to the time of Adam, all right, which we know Abel was slew, all right, then you had Seth, Enos, and it tells you, then begin men to call on the name of the Lord, and the sons of God has always been given the duty, okay, of calling on those names, all right, representing those names amongst all of the idols all right, and the differences of opinions that are in the earth. Okay, remember it is idol worship that has led to this great mess that we find ourselves in. As a matter of fact, as you can see here on the screen, all right, Hajj pilgrimage, all right, more than 1,000 dead in extreme 52C heat wave. Let's check this out. Nearly 2 million Muslims undertake the journey to Mecca annually. And this year, more than 1,000 people have so far reportedly died. It's let's read this. Let's, 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 Unbelievable. Let's, let's run that back. Nearly 2 million Muslims undertake the journey to Mecca annually, and this year, more than 1,000 people have so far reportedly died. It's unbelievably hot there, temperatures of over 50 degrees right now, and it's feared the death toll could go much, much higher. Unregistered pilgrims do not have access to proper facilities, things like air conditioning and official transport. As Caroline Hawley now reports. Now, if you, uh, you know, watch our live camps, you know, which we go out every Friday. Sometimes we go out Tuesday, but last, not this past Friday's camp, but the camp before that, you know, there was a Muslim guy who came up. You know, we went back and forth with him. You know, sometimes it gets played out going back and forth with these people, but you know, some edification came out. You know, we dealt with him. You know, he didn't have the answers as pertaining any prophecies that are in the uh, Quran. You know, all that he did was, you know, tell us that, you know, Muhammad, was illiterate, all right? When we kept asking him, well, what, was, what did he prophesy? What did he say? Well, he was illiterate. He was illiterate. You know, then he said, well, he's on the same level as who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, you know? And all of this rhetoric, you know, we ended up, you know, uh, he ended up scurrying off. Um, but, you know, we went into some history. But we brought up this uh, particular Kaaba stone, which these uh, heathen, all right, and you got our people that are a part of this religion as well. They go and worship. And um, we were uh, talking about how, you know, annually, and you know, they, they go to uh, circle this stone. Okay, and ultimately this is the idol that they serve. You see, so this year, 
okay, a week after we, you know, and brothers all around the world always condemning this, so it's not saying we're anything special. A week after, you know, we uh, dealt with that, we talked about how Mecca used to be, you know, a land of idolatry, which it still is. They had an idol for each, you know, day of the uh, of the year. All right, then they came to serve one God, you know, as Muhammad linked with Khadijah, who was a Jew. All right, and ultimately, the religion of Islam in its fulfillment is a uh, offshoot of the Roman Catholic Church. Okay, and really, what they worship is Mary, as we've been uh, showing you. You know, this uh, particular stone. Okay. This is nothing but a, 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 a vagina worship. And this is what they kiss. Okay. They lick it. They kiss it. Okay. <laughs> I don't believe they sanitize it because it's holy. You know, but they, they go annually, all right, to worship this stone. And ultimately, this is nothing but queen of heaven worship. This is why in the book of, uh, in the Quran, you have the book of Miriam. Okay. And that's all this is. This is an idol. Okay? Let's check this out. No, absolutely not. I mean, you know, you could look up videos on it. As a matter of fact, I did a video going in down the rabbit hole of idol worship. If you want to check this video out, I'll go into it a little bit here. Going down the rabbit hole of idol worship, the Queen of Heaven. You know, uh, which is one of the strongholds in this world. Um, but yeah, when, when you when you go into that, you know that idol, it's literally a, a vagina. Okay. Is that the you see it in the reality? My friend, is that the black stone in the picture? Bro, is that the black stone? I have it in the picture. Is that the black stone, my friend? Do you do you see it? Is that really a black stone, or making up a story? Is that your black stone? Where it is, bro? I cannot see I'm that. I'm showing it in YouTube. The madness. Can women kiss the black stone? Can a woman kiss the black stone? So let's take a look at the legal perspective. Legally, a woman can kiss the black stone. But practically, we may need to think about this because as we've seen nowadays, there are crowds around the black stone and usually men and women struggling to get to the black stone. Under circumstances like this, I would advise women not to consider kissing the black stone. As we all are aware that um, just doing ishara, so just putting up your this is madness. hands and indicating that you're kissing the black stone will suffice. On the other hand, if... You know. Dr. Shabir, welcome to Let the Quran Speak. Pleasure to be on. Now, one aspect of the Hajj pilgrimage is the... And the main significance, I believe, is that it uh, it marks a, a, a corner uh, from which the circumambulation starts. Um, if it had not been for this, then, you know, one would not, um, like every corner would be the same. Uh, so there is this distinctive uh, tone is how we might regard mm. the black stone here. Um, you can look up more on it, you know, we ain't got to get too deep into it. But yeah, that's that's exactly uh, you know what, what this is. This is nothing but an idol. Been, has, was built by the prophet Ibrahim, peace be upon him. Which yeah, they're telling you that Abraham built it. There's all kind of madness tied to this religion, you know, which we go into at times. But you know, any and our people are heavily into this garbage, you know. But at the end of the day. At the end of the day, <laughs> you, and we, we go into the history. At the end of the day, every year there's a pilgrimage to go and bow to this thing. Okay. Black stone. Look at that. A lot of people don't know this about you know the Islam you know which the star and the moon represents you know uh, Semiramis Queen of Heaven all right 
the you know moon worship goes back to the Sabines. It's a it's a bunch of history that we would have to go into. But the bottom line is, you can see you know billions of people want to touch this idol. Stone was brought from heaven. The black stone descended from paradise. It was whiter than uh, than milk, but it became black due to the sins of the children of Adam. <laughs> And this is nothing but the children of Ishmael, okay, the uh, Arabs, who they're not children of the covenant. You know, they had a blessing, don't get it twisted, all right, but uh, ultimately the blessing was passed down, all right, from Isaac, all right, so they have their myths, their idols, and this is one of them, one of many. Stone will testify on the day of judgment. And this is why they're all kissing it because by Allah on the day of Kiyamah, Allah will present all right, the Hajar al Azwad in such a manner that it will have two eyes and a tongue to testify to the Iman of all those who kissed it. So this is why they're all rushing here to kiss it, all right, so that they can be covered pretty much. And this is just the tip of the iceberg, you know, with this uh, madness. All right, but um, as you can see here, let's start over. <laughs> This year, on their way to go and worship this, thousands of them dropped dead, right? In extreme heat. Nearly two million Muslims undertake the journey to Mecca annually, and this year, more than a thousand people have so far reportedly died. It's unbelievably hot there, temperatures of over 50 degrees right now, and it's feared the death toll could go much, much higher. Unregistered pilgrims do not have access to proper facilities, things like air conditioning and official transport, as Caroline Hawley now reports. It's a sacred duty for Muslims to perform the pilgrimage once in their lifetime, if physically and financially able. And it's a colossal logistics operation for the Saudi authorities. They've been criticized in the past for the way they've handled the Hajj, for deadly stampedes. But this year, the danger came from bliss. You're people killing one another to get to the stone, right? Stirring heat. There was water on hand, large sprinklers, and some air-conditioned areas for the more than 1.8 million pilgrims. But it was more than 50 degrees in the shade, and the scorching temperature took a terrible toll. Atha Hussein is imam of Leicester's central mosque. He's just returned home from Saudi Arabia, scarred by what he saw. It was undoubtedly um, a traumatic experience. You would walk and you simply wouldn't know where to look because everywhere you turned, you would see someone struggling in some way or the other, uh, <laughs> people completely drowned in sweat. It's not just the frail and the elderly who were affected. Um, I saw perfectly fit individuals um, who were struggling just to make 50 yards. In the village of Menofia in northern Egypt, a family mourns. 70-year-old Effendia sold jewellery to pay for the pilgrimage. She had a tourist visa and, like many others, wasn't officially registered for the Hajj. Her children say she was left to walk for miles, taken advantage of by an unscrupulous tour operator. Through. She called home as she was dying. I screamed and couldn't believe it. She phoned my brother and told him she felt her soul is... 